Hey, welcome back. So last time I took an electric TV stand and made a few tweaks on it. But this project is still not finished yet. At this point I'd have to hook up some sort of power supply in order to let it spin. And well, that's not a very nice way of using it. So as a short recap, I am doing this because I wanted to have a smoothly spinning surface to let stuff rotate while I'm filming it. But before we begin, let me draw a few outlines. I would like to include a user-friendly display and some input knob to set the speed and maybe some timing parameters. Also, I figured that I already have way too many wild tools here in my shop, so I'd like to make this untethered and therefore it should be battery powered. And since there is no room for additional electronics in the turntable itself, I'd rather make a brand new external housing for all of that stuff. Sounds like a heck of a project, but I feel like being productive right now, so I better get started. Yeah, so this is my final design and all the electronics are built into the front console. And the best part is, the console is held in place by magnets and can be detached easily to give some room for bigger subjects. Then when you are done filming, simply snap it back in place and that's it. So let's take a closer look. After turning on the device, it will automatically go into a paused mode. This lets you select the direction and speed before it actually starts turning the motor. Then, when you press the button, it toggles into the running mode and the turntable rotates. And that's it, it's as simple as that. Now of course there is room for improvement here. Something like an automatic stop after a pre-selected amount of time or a precise rotation of for example 90 degrees. But since it features an Arduino, I can change the code pretty much whenever I want. For now, I just want a portable turntable that is easy to use and just works. So if you are interested, stick around as I walk you through the build of this project. My name is Robin and today we'll make the Arduino powered turntable. Wait a second, what is that? Well, remember that we only have a regular DC motor, so there's no way we can get rotational feedback. And we need that for features like PID to set and maintain a constant speed or to precisely rotate to a target angle. So this is a mount that holds an optical rotary encoder disc. The gear on top will attach to one of the existing gears and drive this encoder. With that installed, let's proceed with the actual console. I chose a pretty unconventional method of putting my electronics into this box, but let me explain that. First I thought about what components I actually need. And like said before, there is a display, a rotary encoder and a battery. Then we obviously need some charging and protection circuitry to make this device safe and user friendly. Then to control the motor, I'll put in one of those dual H-bridge modules. And of course we only need one H-bridge, but that's what I have laying around. And because this motor does not run at the battery voltage, I'll put in a boost converter to up it to 15 volts. And the brain of this whole operation will be an Arduino Pro Mini running at 16 MHz. So last but not least, I need a buck converter to step down the 15 volts back to a 5 volt level that powers the display, the Arduino and all the other electronic components. So here's what I did next. First I rearranged all the components to a location where they might be in the final casing. Then I roughly outlined the bottom part of the case onto which all of them get mounted. My plan is to simply glue them in place with hot glue. Now this might not be the best practice, but it's quick and easy. To save a ton of space, I'll not install any pin headers, but directly solder wires to all of the pins after the parts are glued in place. 
I'll take this approach because I want this device to be as small as you can get without any custom PCBs. So this is how it turned out at the end. Every component has its own mounting post to which it will be glued to. But unfortunately I lost an entire 64GB SD card full of footage and that's why I have to jump right to the point where this part was already printed and had the components glued in place. Yeah, so here we are. If you now give me a second to get all the wiring ready, I'll be back at explaining what is actually going on. Wow, this was a lot of soldering and tinkering, but look at how small it turned out. Here's an 18650 cell as a size comparison. I had a lot of trouble soldering in those tiny wires without melting any plastic, but I think it was worth the time. So now let's take a look at the enclosure. My plan is to slide that onto the bottom plate from above and hold everything in place with two screws. I already prepared the enclosure by inserting all the wires and gluing their connectors inside. But before putting all together, we have to talk about software. The micro USB port that is exposed by this device is not meant to transfer any firmware to the Pro Mini. Its only purpose is to charge the battery. When a firmware update is needed, the enclosure has to be opened. So I prepared some basic code to get the project started. As always, I am using Platform.io as my main Arduino IDE. If you are interested, check out my intro video, which will be linked down below. So this code does not make any usage of the rotary encoder yet. All it basically does is drawing a simple UI onto the display, watching for user input through the knob and outputting a PWM signal to the driver. But what I also did is included some EEPROM lines that store the selected direction and speed so I don't have to dial it in every time I restart the device. As always this code is published on GitHub. If you're interested you'll find the link down below. I already uploaded this firmware to the Pro Mini by using a regular USB to UART converter so we can continue with the assembly. And now it starts to get a bit tricky. There's almost no room at all for the wires to take place. But after fiddling around for a while, I managed to get the stuff in there and forced the switch into the slot. After securing everything with two screws, the unit is fully assembled. Now I'm sorry, but there's one more thing. Ok, now we are finished, I promise. But I had to clean the old grease off and put in some fresh lubricant to get this thing to run smoothly. So let's pop in a battery and turn this thing on.
If you enjoyed this video and want to support my work, I'd be more than happy to welcome you on my Patreon page. I started vlogging about my shop and the projects I do. To show my appreciation, these vlogs are exclusively for my Patreons. So with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.